Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are cooking some ribs. Um, I do them a bit different. Everybody's heard of the 3-2-1 method. Well, we're not doing that today. To start with, these ribs were carefully hand selected, mainly due to being on sale. Yep, that's right. Caught them on sale, so we, we're fixing some ribs tonight. I usually go ahead and just cut them in half. I know, I know, we're not gonna be cooking full racks. But uh, for what what I do with them, they kind of need to be in half. We typically store our leftovers in the freezer to eat at a later date. Barbecue's one of those things that holds pretty dang good in the freezer. So we'll be freezing some half racks for, for future use, quick dinners. I, it took them a while to thaw out. I had them, had them stashed in the freezer, but uh, I normally like to season these the afternoon before. Give that seasoning some time to work into the meat, but they'll be fine. We're, it's about noon now. I plan on putting these on the pit at two. That'll give them two hours to, to sit with the seasoning on in the refrigerator and uh, it, it'll work out all right. This will probably get the dog involved with the process here in just a second. So I am going to go ahead and rinse these off in a little bit of water. I don't like the way that whatever they're packaged in the bag is kind of slimy feeling. We're going to get rid of that. This membrane. Sometimes I pull it off. Sometimes I leave it. A lot of it just depends on whether or not it wants to come off. This one appears to be stuck on there pretty good, so we're just going to leave it. It'll be all right. But we are going to make sure and dry these off really, really well. Oh, welcome to the party. The nose knows. We're going to start on this underside. The first thing I want to do just to make this easier, so we're going to cut these in half. Oh, heck with it. We'll just go about right there. These are baby back ribs. I'm not super picky on which ribs, just whatever's on sale. <laughs> but I do prefer the baby back ribs. All right, so on to the seasoning portion. We don't stray too far away on seasonings. We got some black pepper. Uh, I like coarser ground, but this is all we got, so we're gonna use it. I like just a little bit of seasoning on. I'm not gonna get super carried away with this. Garlic powder, not garlic salt, just garlic powder. Paprika, I like using paprika on pork, just mainly for the color. A little bit of kosher salt. Now what we're going to use for a binder, instead of mustard, sriracha hot sauce. This is a really great binder. It brings so much to the party, even over mustard. It brings some really good flavor to your food. So uh, we're going to get started. We'll start with this. Actually, first thing we're going to do is open all of our seasonings. That way we can keep one hand, you know, clean. And I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna be using my right hand for all of this stuff and my left hand for all the dirty stuff. And we're just gonna rub this on. Uh, do it to taste. If you like if you like stuff a little spicier, you could go a lot heavier with it. Um, I've got to, I've got to keep the heat level reasonable. Otherwise, I would probably go quite a bit heavier. But it, it does really, I mean, even this amount, it doesn't stay real spicy when it's cooked, and it just it adds a heck of a lot of flavor. It's really good. I know I might be overstressing that and make it even harder to get. So we got that on. 
we'll start with just a little splash of this. So we're not gonna get too carried away with the season on paprika. I mean, you can mix all this stuff together and make a rub, but this is backyard cooking. We're just trying to make stuff taste good, so. Got our garlic. If you don't like garlic, don't use as much. And salt. The big pieces of meat, they can take quite a bit of salt. I've been trying to cut back on it a little bit though, so not gonna go as heavy as I normally would. All right, now we flip. Repeat the process on the other side. Now I do get a little heavier with the sriracha on the meaty side. We've tried the sriracha uh, on one rack and mustard on another. And we've done a combination of mustard and sriracha. And we both agreed on the, just the sriracha was all we needed. So that's what we do now. Do we do garlic? I don't think so. Garlic. Maybe again. All right, now we're just gonna press all this in. It's already looking pretty good, smelling really good. All right, so I got me a little spot cleared out in the fridge. I'm gonna try and stack all these carefully in here. And these will just get stashed in that refrigerator until uh, until we get ready to cook. I like starting them out on the pit cold. Um, I feel like they take in more smoke that way. Um, yeah, I know a lot of people prefer to start them off at room temperature, but yeah, we do stuff different. So yeah, we'll go to dragging out the pit. We'll bring y'all back and uh, get that booger lit up. It's still gonna be an hour or so, but we'll bring y'all along. All right, so we got it warmed up, about 300. That's good enough to do what we need to do right now. We're gonna clean these old grates off. I use the pool. Turn this bugger down to low as it'll go to the smoke setting. We'll let that kind of cool down and start doing its thing. We'll get that meat out of here on it. All right, it's almost 2.30. Ribs are going on. We're just gonna run them on this uh, smoke setting for probably about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. After four, we're going to start cooking. Up until now, we've just been uh, smoking. This is where we're going to open up the sear burner. Kind of move this out of the way. I'm going to turn up the temp. That'll get a fire coming. And we're basically going to sear these rack your ribs off one at a time. All right, well, we're gonna close this lid and make it happen a little bit faster. Alright, so we had a bit of a flare up. It's no big deal, just kind of move stuff around where that fire isn't burning right under it. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. We'll work around it. All 
All right, got them all nestled in there. We got this set to 275. We're gonna let them cook for about an hour. We'll, we'll stick a thermometer in them about an hour from now. Just for reference, it's five o'clock right now. Definitely got the color going on we're looking for. This is purely just out of curiosity. I normally don't even stick a thermometer in them. I just wrap them when I get about the color I want. So I think I land about 160, thereabouts. That one might be a touch more. Boy, it's definitely a whole lot more tender. Yeah, so them ones further back, they're almost done right now. So what we're gonna do is just wrap them in pool. We're gonna finish cooking them for about 30 minutes and that's it, we'll be done. Didn't mention it earlier, but we're going meat side down. We're basically just gonna fold Hold the top now. Hold our two ends in. Like so. Go. Those boogers, they're just gonna sit there and do their thing. Taters are getting close. Eventually. All right, so we'll open up this little one here and stick the thermometer in there and just see what we're looking at temperature wise. Watch that steam, it'll burn you. Smells delicious. Find a good meaty spot. Looks like we're stalling out about 194 there. Might have to go back in there a little bit longer. It actually feels pretty dang tender where it's at though. I almost hate to go much further. We'll stick it back in there and check a different one. Man, if you could smell that, awesome. I'm gonna stick this right here in a nice meaty spot. I like seeing the bones poking out. It's usually a pretty good sign. And I think we're there. I like carry over, put it right where it needs to be. You can definitely tell it's nice and tender. So, yep, we're good, we're pulling now. Okay, well, got her off the pit. They turned out, or they're looking pretty dang good right now. You usually like to let them rest a little bit longer, but we're gonna go ahead and cut into them and see what we got. All right, well, we'll use a nice long knife for this. Our 
are still very hot. There you go. Got a nice smoke ring. Very, very juicy. Too hot to take a bite of right now. A few moments later. That's really the way I like it. You can take a bite off of it. The bone still pulls clean, but they're not just falling apart. Don't need any sauce. And these haven't even rested yet. They're, this is still nearly too dang hot to hold. And you can see that juice just run out of it, just so you can kind of see. I mean, it's very beautiful. Okay, so the ones of these that we're gonna freeze, I'll stick them in a half gallon Ziploc bag. We'll just try to suck as much air out of them as possible. We go through them fast enough, they don't need to be vacuum sealed. I mean, if, if you can, that's definitely the route to go. When we get ready to pull them out and eat them, we'll just warm them up. And uh, usually we just thaw them out in warm water. Get home from work, plop them in the sink. About an hour later, they'll be ready to uh, heat up however you want. If you vacuum seal them, you could boil them in the bag. We end up just microwaving them. We'll pull them out of the bag, just microwave them enough to get them warmed up. But yeah, I'll put together a quick plate and get another bite. I didn't want to show this. So, that membrane, we left it on. It is not a tough membrane to eat. I mean, it doesn't hurt the flavor of the meat, the texture. It, it's fine leaving it on there. I gotta step back from this. Well, here you go, finished product. Um, didn't get too carried away with the vegetables. We got a nice smoked sweet potato. Got our ribs, turned out beautiful. Perfect texture, plenty of moisture. Still perfectly tender. So definitely give that little rib trick a try. It, it doesn't take very long. Um, if you're cooking on wood and that's typically why I cook them like this is I always used to use wood and we'd get that sear while the wood was burning down get the sear the way we want it let them cook till they get about the color we wanted get some bone kind of poking out a little bit and then uh, wrap them wrap them for about 30 minutes all it takes finish them up definitely your your timing will be different on a wood fire or charcoal Timing might be different on your particular pellet grill. You know, hey, give it a try. It's backyard cooking. It's not competition. Nobody gonna grade you. Um, if it flops, it flops. Try some different ways of doing it. You never know. You might end up with something you like better than, than the, you know, standard way of doing things. So on that note, I'm gonna sit back, enjoy dinner. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch y'all on the next one. Got some black powder, black. All right, so I really don't know what to make straight the countertop or the ceiling line. I don't know why they're both crooked. Never fail, you're gonna be out of paper towels when you need them. Right about now is when you get worried that you didn't hit the record button. I hit it this time. That's good. Mm. Sorry, I took too many test bites. You gotta go. Get out of the kitchen. Hey, out. Out. Go on. Keep going, though. Go. Out. Alright. No, you stay over there. Put this sucker on. Yeah, we're on. Okay. I've lost more videos from not turning the dang camera on than you'd ever imagine.
So the ones that we're gonna freeze, I'm not gonna cut them up. I'm gonna let them cool all the way down. We'll stick them in like a half gallon Ziploc bag and try to get as much water out of them as we can. Or Meanwhile, 